If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to solve the question on your own first before listening on. We have a current carrying coil of wire that is made up of 20 turns and it is placed in a magnetic field and it will therefore experience a torque. Let's take a look at the formula that gives the torque for a current carrying coil of wire placed in a magnetic field. So we can see that the torque on the coil is going to equal a cross product between a quantity that is known as the magnetic dipole moment and then the magnetic field. And since we have a cross product, we can actually expand the cross product by following the rules of calculating cross products. So let's take a look at that. So here is the cross product between the magnetic dipole moment and the magnetic field in its full unit vector expanded form. You might want to pause the video and look it over just to make sure it makes sense. The good news is that we can actually simplify this dreadful looking equation by noting a couple of things. Let's take a look at the magnetic field first. And we can see that the magnetic field is pointing in this direction here. And it has both an X component as well as a Z component. But notice that it's not pointing in the Y direction whatsoever. So that means that the value of BY is going to equal zero, Tesla. So anywhere in this cross product we see BY, we can plug in a zero and that's basically going to cancel out that term there. So for example, right here, by would be zero, and when we multiply it by mu z, that's gonna be zero still. So we can actually cross out this right here, and then by also appears right here, so that can eliminate. We next wanna look at the direction of the magnetic dipole moment, which is symbolized by this Greek letter mu. And the direction of the magnetic dipole moment is not apparent in the diagram because it's not noted. So what you have to do is actually use a so-called right-hand rule. And this is going to help you determine the direction of that magnetic dipole moment. And it's difficult to draw, but the basic idea is that you want to grab the wire, or the coil of wire, I should say, with your right hand so that your four fingers will be pointing in the direction of the current. So again, you might want to pause the video and try to envision this, but you're going to grab the coil, maybe imagine grabbing it at the top of the coil with your right hand so that your four fingers would be pointing in the direction of the current. And if you do that, your outstretched thumb would be giving you the direction of that magnetic dipole moment. So in this case, if we grab the coil with our right hand, our four fingers would be sort of curling around this right corner of the coil and our outstretched thumb would actually be pointing in this direction here. Again, a little bit difficult to draw, but hopefully we can see that the magnetic dipole moment, according to that rule, would be pointing exclusively in the Z direction. So that's going to be the direction of the magnetic dipole moment. And since it's only pointing in the Z direction, that means that the value of mu x as well as mu y will both equal zero. So anywhere we have mu y or mu x, we're gonna be able to plug in zero and eliminate that term. So that's gonna knock out this term. And it's also going to knock away this term right here. And finally, it's going to knock out this term as well. So all that's left standing is this mu z times bx for the j hat component. So we've simplified the cross product into the following form, and we now want to begin to plug in some of the known values. And for mu z, once again, we said it's pointing in the z direction in this fashion. Notice that that's the negative z direction. So we're going to have negative for the value of mu z. And it turns out that the magnetic dipole moment has a magnitude equal to n times i times a. So n is the number of turns in the coil, which was stated to be 20. I is the value of the current, which was 0.10 amps, and then A is the area of the loop. We can see that our loop is rectangular, so the area is going to be the length multiplied by the width. So we'll go ahead and plug in the, the values for NIA. So we're going to have 20 times the current, and then times the area. Notice for the area, you have to convert that into meters, so it's going to be 0.10 meters multiplied by 0 0.05 meters. So there is the value for mu z, and then we have bx. So we only want the x component of the magnetic field. We can see the magnetic field is right here symbolized with this letter b. 
the x component, of course, would be pointing in this direction right here. We can see that the x component is adjacent to that angle theta. So when we multiply, we're going to end up with the x component of b times the cosine of that angle. And again, we're using the cosine because the x component is adjacent to the angle that's marked theta. It's also pointing in the positive x direction, so we have to make sure we leave this as a positive value. Now, the magnitude of the magnetic field was given to be 0.5 Tesla, so we can actually come in here and fill that in. And then the angle that's formed between the x-axis and the magnetic field was stated to be 30 degrees, so we can actually go in here and plug that in as well. So make sure your calculator is in degree mode, and then you'll type this all in. And when you do that, oh, and let's not forget that this is all in the J hat direction. And so when you plug that in, you're going to get about negative 0.00433. And the standard unit of torque is Newton meters. And again, this is acting in the J hat component, which is basically the Y direction.